to Mardi Gras. I'm Bonnie Winfrey. Tonight is a big night for the Zatha Club of the Joliet area. It's our annual fundraiser. So it's themed Mardi Gras, and we have um, over 100 people or more here just investing in Zanta and just having a good time uh, talking about what the organization is all about. Zanta is about building and empowering women and girls. Um, it's one of the greatest things that you can be a part of. And I just want to say to any of you out there, if you ever want to be a part of something important, something making a different difference in people's lives, join Zanta. You will truly love it. And like I said, you will be making a difference in a lot of people's lives, locally as well as globally. So what we're going to do now is just talk to a few Zanshans and later we'll go into our program. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, I am here with the chairs for tonight's wonderful Mardi Gras event. We have Beth Colvin and we have Kathy Miller. I know you guys are excited about everything. Are Tell me about excited. it, Beth. This is such a great event. There's about approximately 170 attendees tonight, mm -hmm. and we are we are hoping to pack the house. So, well, that's good. What about you, Kathy? How do you feel about tonight? I feel that it's really going to be a great event. Um, everyone, look, you know, the music, the camaraderie it's just really started off great mm -hmm. so tell me about this you you've been planning this for a while yeah. what has your journey been like it I mean it, it's a learning experience you you know we just it's a great event it's a great cause Zanta Zanta's mission empowering the status of women and building a better world for women and girls mm -hmm. so we're raising money to help service organizations and scholarships in the community that's right. So this is your first year cheering, correct? Yes. <laughs> what has it meant for you? Um, it's been a great experience. Um, Beth has been wonderful. Um, everybody's been wonderful. And um, I'm just excited. We kind of shook it up a little. Usually we do it on a Sunday, but um, it's a Friday night now, and we have a great attendance, um, like Beth was saying. You know, it's, I'm really excited um, to see you know, the rest of the night, how it goes okay. up. I want you to look into the camera. Okay. And what would you tell our audience in reference to Zanta? Zanta is an excellent organization. Um, when I started two years ago, um, it was just, you know, the women, everybody has been wonderful. I never knew Zanta existed. Um, and I just find a lot of hardworking, um, service-oriented women, professional women, who just want to make a difference in the world. And it's something that I believe in. I understand. We're what about, about you, Beth? We are all about empowering mm -hmm. other women, building up women, yeah. and it's a camaraderie. Zanta, yeah. we're, all, we're all sisters in, in Zanta. Okay. So we're looking forward to a great event tonight. So, Thank you both so much. Thank okay. you for having Go and have fun. We're at Mardi Gras, and I am with Pam Honte, which is such a pleasure because she chairs our international committee. Tell us what's going on with Zanta internationally. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Well, Zanta works in so many different countries, we are helping women across the world, not only locally. Uh, some of the problems are the same, some of the problems are different, but uh, right now we coordinate Zanta International with the United Nations, largely with UNICEF, the Children's Fund, and also with UNFPA, the Fund for Population Activities, and Zanta actually has given a total of about $35 million over the years to help women and girls in various countries throughout the world. We all know there are so many problems, whether it be economic or social, and uh, Zanta works through the UN, who has local offices, and actually uh, we are very successful. Every year is different. And uh, right now, we are working in 12 different countries, 
in uh, attempting to lower the marriage rate and the, the excuse me, the marriage age, yes. <laughs> lower the marriage age. And uh, that is quite successful. There's also quite a few programs on trying to deal with violence against women, which we know is such a problem here and other countries. Yeah. And also nutrition, nutrition is a big thing, literacy, education. So I'm just really uh, happy to be a part of Zanta and be able to continue my focal point on international work. How long have you been a Zantian? About 10 years. That is so good. Pam, I wanna thank you for all the work that you do. I know there's so much. What's coming up though? Okay, very good. Well, we have International Women's Day, which every year uh, comes on the 8th of March, and that's a big event throughout the world. We may not hear very much about it, but it's becoming more and more popular. Uh, this year, the focus is on trying to improve the finances of women throughout the world, an economic focus, and social, of course, too. And that will be March 8th, which is right around the corner. <clears throat> and then in New York, there is a huge conference coming up, which is called the Commission on the Status of Women, which is at UN headquarters. It is virtually attended by 7,000 people. And there are hundreds who go to New York to discuss what are the issues with women, how, pro how we can make progress, what is the project, prog what is the, 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 the progress that has mm -hmm. been made, mm -hmm. and it's taking stock of where we are in trying to improve our status. That will be coming up uh, the 11th of March, right around the corner. That is so good. And I always say, Zanta's on the move, so um, we always have activities and we're always bettering life for women and girls. Thank you so much, Pam, oh, for all you. you do. Thank you very much, locally and internationally. Yes. Locally, we have so many good things going on, too. That's right. Okay. We do, definitely do. Okay. Thank, Thank you again. Tonight's a big night, and I have with me a giant right now, and that is Pat Perrier. She is the PR chair for our local Zanta, um, and I just want to say thank you for everything that you do. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm following in your footsteps, <laughs> so... You know, it's, it's nice to learn and it's nice to expand my skills as well. And it's nice to bring the message of Zanta out to more people. It really is because Zanta is worth talking about. Zanta is worth getting involved with. Zanta is worth just um, learning about everything that we're doing. Like I said, following us and um, getting on the bandwagon. So we have a special project that we're doing. And this is on March 8th and that's International Women's Day. And what we're doing is we're having a panel discussion. We're saying no to violence and we're kind of like um, joining forces with Zanta International where they're investing in women. And what we're doing is we'll, we're putting together a panel of about six to seven people mm -hmm. talking about violence um, in regards to human trafficking, in regards to bullying, and also domestic violence. You want to talk a little bit more about it? Sure. We have a number of experts that we're drawing from in the community. We're looking at experts in the legal field. We're looking at experts in the field of preventing d domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Our aim is to give people not only information but resources. So you may not well, let me rephrase that. You probably know someone who's been affected by domestic violence. Yeah. So this is a way to get the resources to that person. This is also a way to understand how the process works and sometimes the frustrations of the process when it doesn't go well. So we hope that these women, it's, all, it's going to be an all-woman panel, we hope that these women can impart their knowledge and give the audience and the community the resources that they need to know where to go. And we're going to also be talking about prevention. Yes. And if you're in a situation like Pat was talking about, we're going to tell you how you can really get some help mm -hmm. because it's a serious situation. I believe it was, they no, noted that Illinois was like number one for um, human trafficking. Uh, I can't even believe that, but hopefully we can reduce those numbers. And um, 
Pat, there's a lot going on with Zanto. Why do you love being a part of the organization? Because I learn from so many good people and I get to talk about the good things we do. When I first started in Zanta, it was almost 15 years ago, and everybody said, what's Zanta? And we're hearing that question a lot less now because we're on the move and we're oh. showing up and we're talking about it. We are loud and proud and we're out there sending our message to the community. And for those of you who don't know, we have a podcast, and it's called Zanta's, Zanta on the Move Podcast. And you can listen to it on Google, Apple, and Spotify. I mean, we have some deep discussions, don't we? Yes. We had um, amazing guests, not only our honoree tonight, mm -hmm. but we've had, we have a young woman and her husband who are doing a period education project in Uganda. We talked to Zanta International's president. She talked about her journey. Yeah. We talked about the truck wrapping project that Zanta's going, there are trucks on the road that say no Ooh. to violence with the Zanta logo on it. So we have a far reaching podcast. We love that we're being heard all over the world. Yes, it's amazing because we're receiving a lot of feedback from it where people are saying we love the podcast. So we want you to just kind of go to Google, Spotify, or Apple to listen. It's a great thing. So what about tonight? Are you excited? I'm very excited. This has been, um, we've had several iterations of the Mardi Gras theme, and I think we get better each time we do it. Mm -hmm. So we're, um, again, I'm very proud of our honoree. I'm proud of our the club, the way we pull together and just get stuff done when it needs to get done. Um, and it's a wonderful time to be a Zanchen. So I hope we have some Zanchens that don't know they're Zanchens yet, yeah. because we're going to bring them in. That's what I'm thinking, too. We'll have some to come forward tonight. I think so. and, and if you're sitting at home and you're thinking about joining Zanta, contact us. This will be a great organization to be a part of. Thank you so much, Pat. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. You too. I'm here with Dr. Patricia Miller, and it is my pleasure to be with a person who I feel is a mentor to me and a great, great friend. She's been with Zanta for 50 years. We just celebrated our 50th anniversary and she was one of our honorees as well as Carmen Castagna. And um, Dr. Pat, I am so glad that you're here tonight. Tell me, I know you've been a little under the weather and it must feel pretty good to be here among under Zanchans, I would presume. Oh, definitely. I mean, I always was at all of these wonderful events, and I thought I can't miss this. So I've been working toward making sure that I did all the right things in order to be able to get dressed and out and about, and, and I'm here. And you're sharp, too. Very sharp. You know, I always, I'm always a fan of your hats. I love hats, and always a fan of yours. So you look very, very good. Again tonight, my first thought was when I looked for a hat that I have to wear one on behalf of all the women who for the last 50 years have made Zanta the wonderful organization that it is and what we've done for this community. That's fantastic. So tonight, here we are, we're celebrating, we're, you know, it's our fundraiser, you know, we're still celebrating our 50th anniversary, it's our fundraiser, um, we're just here to raise money, look into that camera, and there's someone out there that wants to give to us, what would you tell them? I think there are many, many organizations out there that, that do wonderful things, and that are asking for some charitable or a donation from you. But I ask you for something special because Zanta really focuses on attempting to do special things for women and girls who for so long were always second class in, in, in research, in, in opportunities, and we're still attempting to get that equality. Um, so I hope that you would consider helping us to help those causes. That is great. What are you most proud about when you think of Zanta and you think about some of our projects that we do locally and internationally? Oh, wow, because we've done so many over the years. I mean, we were there kind of at the beginning when Guardian Angel was just forming. We were there at the beginning when they had 
the uh, halfway house for alcoholic women who were afraid to go home to their families because once they were out of the hospital, they had nobody to help their families understand that they were, they were okay to come home. We had um, opportunities for um, things with Easter Seal, for example, and one of the special programs that we had recently um, that made such a difference because it was specifically for girls with disabilities. And that brought some, such joy. I remember going there to visit and touring and hearing about the success of the program we sponsored. So there are just so many, many things. Yes. But I am I'm really pleased that we have many more and there's so much need. I know that we need to have, you know, $100,000 a year for our, for our, our things. Or more. Or yes, more. exactly. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Pat. You know I love you. Well, thank you, and, and I love you, and I love Zonta, so we're in the right place tonight. We're we? in the right place, definitely. At this time, I'd like to present President Bonnie Winfrey. Thank you so much. We have a special presentation tonight for a woman of distinction, and boy, is she a treasure to our community. But anyway, I want you to hear her story, first of all. Amira Abuyasov currently serves as the coordinator for the 12th Judicial District Family Violence Coordinating Council through the Chief Judge's Office at the Will County Courthouse. Amira received her Bachelor of Science from the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign in psychology with a minor in gender and women's studies in 2010. She completed her master's in arts in marriage and family theater, I'm sorry, therapy from Adler University in 2012. She is also a certified domestic violence professional since 2013. Her career as an advocate, advocate began at the University of Illinois where she served many years as a facilitator for a student group called the Sexual Health Peers. During her time, she provided numerous presentations on healthy relationships and safer self practices to students. Under her leadership of the Sexual Health Peers, the group brought world-renowned speakers to campus to provide thought-provoking conversations around sex positivity. She also served as a facilitator for the first year campus acquaintance rape education program and interactive discussion on sexual assault. She completed her 40-hour sexual assault training the summer between completing her bachelor's and starting her master's. With this training, she started as a volunteer sexual assault advocate at Guardian Angel Community Services in August of 2010. As a sexual assault advocate, Amira provided medical advocacy to those receiving medical care after a sexual assault. Amira received Guardian Angel's Volunteer of the Year Award in 2012. After completing her master's degree, Amira started as the children's counselor in the Groundwork Domestic Violence Program at Guardian Angel Community Services, providing counseling to children and families affected by domestic violence. In spring of 2014, Amira began as program manager of Groundwork, overseeing the 24-7 our hotline, shelter, counseling, advocacy, and outreach. She also wrote grants and anything else that was needed. During this time, she provided presentations on domestic violence throughout the community and beyond. Amira is no stranger to the media. Um, she's a frequent guest on 1340 WJOL. She has also been a guest on the WGN Morning News, and she has also been a guest on the Zanta's On The Move podcast. So, and that's something, if you wanna catch that interview, you can catch it on Google, Apple, 
or Spotify. She has served on the steering committee for Will County Take Back the Night since 2014, serving as co-chair of the committee for many of those years. She served as a chair of the Funding Oversight Committee and as a program council member of the Illinois Coalition Against Domestic Violence. Amira has served as a board member of the Illinois Certified Domestic Violence Professionals Incorporated, also serving in several leadership positions and on several committees. Now, through her position on the Family Violence Coordinating Council, Amira brings professionals together to improve the systems that work with survivors of family violence. This includes law enforcement, social services, the judicial system, mental health services, and anyone else committed to the cause. Through outreach, training, and collaborative conversations, the Family Violence Coordinating Council works to reduce barriers for survivors, improve outcomes, and ultimately reduce family violence in our community. Her newest mission, get this, is to launch the Domestic Violence Fatality Review Team, one of five pioneer teams in the state of Illinois. This team is tasked with reviewing domestic violence fatalities to make recommendations to improve systems with the goal of reducing future fatalities. Amira is a lifelong resident of Joliet. She is married to her partner of nearly 20 years, Dan Foreman. They have one daughter, Vivian Foreman, and two cats. <laughs> when not advocating for survivors of domestic violence, Amira enjoys practicing yoga, reading, watching classic films, listening to a wide variety of music, and time with her family and friends. Amira, come forward. Let's go come afterwards. We, the Zante Club of Joliet, applaud you. We appreciate you. We thank you for the heart that you have for helping people and saving people and helping them cross the finish line and getting them to a point where they can dream, they can live, and they can dream and have better lives. The world should have more of yours. And we just thank you, thank you, thank you for all your work. sense of humor is just on the same par. I was at the Groundwork fundraising race that I try to make every year in about around 2013. And it was pretty cold out and I'm all bundled up and I'm walking, walking towards where the uh, gathering was. And there's this tiny little woman walking on the sidewalk <laughs> towards me. And she's got this really stern look on her face. And so I kind of moved over to the side to let her pass and she blocked me. And she shoves her arm out, we shake hands, and she says in a stern voice, I'm the girl that your son hit in the face with a hockey puck. <laughs> and of course, I'm well aware of that incident because her father called me right after that happened and he wasn't very happy. And we had to work out a, a settlement and everything came out. 
And as you can see, she's beautiful. There's no marks. Um, but another reason why I wanted to speak is because when that happened, it was about 1996, when I was working on, on implementing a domestic violence grant that I got to start the first domestic violence courtroom in Wall County. And I just thought, you know, our careers are kind of intersecting in that respect. Um, I started a domestic violence commission in, in uh, 1993, which now is the council that she heads up. It's got a different name. So our careers have kind of paralleled. So it's just so ironic that that connection and my son is six foot four, 240 pounds. So, you know, thankfully he wasn't that big when he hit the hockey puck. <laughs> now he claims he told her to get out of the way. She says, no, I was a half a block away. So <laughs> somewhere in between there's a truth. But again, what she brings to our community is phenomenal. Obviously you just heard about it. And, uh, you know, her, her brother is a, a veterinarian in, in his father's footsteps. And again, growing up in a house where people are, you know, loving and compassionate to animals, uh, you know, that's something that I know, and and, and it really makes a difference. Um, and if I could just say, I'm 73 years old. I'm, you know, running towards the light. But the one thing that's one thing that's so so important in our community is, you know, a quarter of our life is our childhood, and that's where it's got to be done. I I was born in an orphanage and I won the lotto. I got two amazing parents, and that's why I'm standing here. We have got, as a society, to start redirecting our resources to our children. It's the only way to save our society. And um, I, I didn't have any money for the drawing over here, so I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Zonta a $500 contribution Thank in Amira's name in honor of her award here tonight. So, again. Time to hear from Mira. Okay. One more thing, a couple more things. Um, not done with you yet, Mira. I have a proclamation from the Illinois State Senate. I have another proclamation from the Illinois House of Representatives. We all love you. Thank you so much. I can't believe I'm crying because I actually wrote that this morning so I knew what it was going to say. So um, it's kind of weird. But thank you guys just so much. Um, I'm so overwhelmed and I'm so afraid I'm going to underwhelm all of you, but I'm going to try my best. Um, <laughs> thank you. I'm just, it's a lot. Um, one of the most common questions I get asked is why do I do what I do? Why do I care about domestic violence? And honestly, the answer is I just do. Maybe it's because what happens to one woman happens to us all. What happens in one family happens to all of our families. And what happens in one part of our community affects our whole community. Maybe it's because victim blaming is still the norm. Maybe it's because for too long, women's voices have gone ignored. Silence, because I said our brains were too small. Because our uteruses are too delicate. Or even worse, our uteruses are wandering around our bodies, making us crazy. It's a thing, it's called hysteria, it's bonkers. Um, but maybe it's because one in three women and one in seven men is too much. Because domestic violence doesn't discriminate against race, socioeconomic status, religion, education, gender. But it's really because I know that we can do better. We can do better as a community. Because we can do better at supporting survivors. Better at holding those who choose violence compassionately accountable. Better at ensuring every child understands the dynamics of healthy relationships and consent as well as they understand two plus two equals four. Because we have to. And I don't do this for myself. I do this so no survivor feels trapped in a relationship because they don't know where to go or the fear that no one will believe them. I want them to know that there is help for them when they are ready and a community waiting to support them with open arms. A community that will never stop fighting until every home is safe. And I don't do this alone either. I really do credit my parents with shaping me into the advocate that I am. I'm sorry. My dad who came to this country at 28 from Egypt to further his education 
in the middle of a blizzard in Illinois. That was a big mistake. <laughs> My dad, who was so appreciative of all the opportunities of this country that he spent the rest of his life trying to give it back, he had one of the only 24-hour service clinics, vet veterinarian clinics in our area. So it was really common for him to welcome clients into our home to treat their sick animals after hours. He knew his work was more than just treating sick animals. It was truly treating the owners, treating them with kindness and compassion, which I hope I carry on his legacy through my work every day. And my mom, oh God, my mom, <laughs> she was a riot, okay? She is where I got my strength. Um, she was a lifelong resident of Joliet, and she instilled the love of this town in me, a dedication to this community. Throughout her life, she fought many battles. She was brave, assertive, and opinionated, one of a kind. In her obituary, I wrote that even though through all of her struggles, she always remained unapologetically herself. And I've ad adopted that as my own mantra. That's what I have to be in this line of work every day, unapologetically myself. And I'd like to think that my parents raised two children who are kind, compassionate, brave, and unapologetically ourselves. I also have the support of so many others. My husband, Dan, there are not enough words of praise. Um, I could keep on him for how amazing he is. And if you like me, you'll love Dan. I know I do. <laughs> my daughter, Vivian, um, it's such an honor getting to be her mom and watching her also be unapologetically herself. <laughs> um, my brother, who I'm so proud of. My friends who support me unconditionally. My former coworkers and friends at Guardian Angel Community Services. Being mentored and mentoring others through my role at Guardian Angel will always be one of the biggest joys of my career. My colleagues at the state's attorney's office, the judicial system, law enforcement, and other social service agencies um, I always say that we have the talent in this community to address domestic violence, and these people prove it every day. It's such an honor to do this work alongside them. Um, and my former clients, uh, whose gift of trust during the most vulnerable times still leaves me in awe and gives my work meaning every day. Um, Scott and Monica at WJOL who keep letting me talk into a microphone to advocate for this cause. Um, once Scott read me an email from a listener who, after listening to one of our segments, decided to seek out counseling for the first time after leaving or being out of an abusive relationship for many, many years. And I think about that woman all the time. And if she's the only person who ever benefits from my work, then this was all worth it. And lastly, I want to thank the women of the Santa Club for this honor. This is a group of women who I just hold such high esteem for and they are deserving of all the adoration in the world. They truly embody the mission of their club, making the world a better place by empowering women. One of my fondest memories of my time running the shelter has always been when the Zanshins facilitated a series of workshops for our clients. They had workshops on resume writing, financial literacy, entering higher education, each facilitated by a Zanshin who was an expert in that field. And after each workshop, when the women would come back to shelter, they were glowing. These workshops allowed them to see a future beyond the violence. Women who had just uprooted their lives, living in crisis after enduring years of abuse that eroded their sense of self. I don't know if any of the clients ever really pursue the resources gained from these workshops, but that really isn't the point. Those workshops gave them back hope. And for that, I will always be thankful for the women of the Santa Club of Juliet, and I thank you all for your support tonight. Thank you. Now we go back in the hands of Beth. She's here. First of all, I want to thank our um, chairs for doing a wonderful job.
putting this um, affair together. And I want to really thank the committee who chose our woman of distinction. Um, this, uh, this was a unanimous uh, vote. And, um, and I am so proud that we are honoring Omero. Thank you. Beth? Okay, at this time, we are going to pull the mask raffle. Um, if I could ask everyone who purchased a mask to put them on, we're going to get a picture from the stage. It's the end of the night. We don't care about your hair. <laughs> Come on, men, women. And they are pulling the baskets. You can move the balloons, yeah. <laughs> All right. There you go. Okay, first prize is $200 for the mass raffle. And the number is 22. 22. Congratulations, Shelby. Second prize is One hundred dollars. Eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. Congratulations. Over to the entrance table there. And third prize is fifty dollars. Sixty-seven. Sixty-seven. Congratulations. Okay. We are pulling the basket numbers as we speak, and I will be back in a second, and then we'll pull the 50-50. The 50-50 is $810 to the winner. So give me about five minutes. Okay, at this time we're going to draw the 50-50, and Amir is going to draw it. The, um, to the winner is $820. Dig deep, spin it around. Flip it. Flip it. Flip it, spin it. Don't lose any. Oh. And the winner is Yolanda Reyes. Woo! Congratulations, Yolanda. Thank you so much for joining us for Mardi Gras. It's been a fun night. I'm Bonnie Winfrey, and I want to thank Dick and Millie Schuster for all the great work that they have done. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>